Since we are celebrating our school's 60th anniversary, we thought it would be cool to see what school was like back then. The best person to interview for this is Carl Von Inns. He grew up in Holland and attended the local schools. School back then was quite different than it is now. The north side of Holland was mostly woods and farmland. Here's what elementary school was like for Mr. Von Inns. In Lakewood School, my class was the biggest class and there were five kids in the class. And it was a kindergarten through eighth grade class. One room, about 30 kids total. One room schoolhouses were common and they would be for kindergarten through eighth grade. At the time, there was no West Ottawa School District and all the kids from the schoolhouses would attend Holland High School, including Mr. Von Inns. I graduated from Holland in 1956. Everyone in this, in the general area, including Hamilton, everyone went to Holland High School and you didn't have any choice. Holland tried to take all the area that is now West Ottawa and add it to their school. Well, the people in West Ottawa, which is West Ottawa now, but primarily Wakazoo and Beechwood, voted tremendously against joining Holland. So in 1958, the West Ottawa School District was born. Mr. Von Inns graduated from Hope College in 1960 and was hired by West Ottawa to have his own school teaching 7th and 8th graders. And they hired three people that year, and I was one of the three people hired, and put out in Harlem School, which is on Berry Street, another one-room school where I had 15 seventh graders and I think 11 eighth graders, and they went to school at Harlem in a one-room building, and I was given $100 extra because that was supposedly a problem school at the teacher who had been there before me didn't know much about the school and so the kids would go downstairs and shut the furnace off in the winter and when she'd find the furnace was off and it was getting into the 60s she would send all the kids home and so the, the superintendent at that time uh, Lloyd Van Ralty, said I'm going to give you a hundred dollars simply to deal with the problem children there well there weren't any problem children there. I got to know all the families. Because the area was mostly woods and farmland, sometimes your nearest neighbor would be a few miles away. The kids would be excited to go to school because it would be their only time to see their friends. Since Mr. Von Inns was in charge of the school, he was able to make a special deal with the students. I gave the kids a choice. You would explain or do the work in school, and they all lived at least four or five miles apart, and so I would explain how to do the lesson but they decided that they would rather have time to play together at school and do the homework at home and if somebody had a problem I would just go home with the kid that night take him home and I would eat with the family and we would do homework until it was finished in school so I would explain how to do the lesson and then we do it we would have recess probably from nine o'clock to eleven then we would eat and they didn't have hot lunches everyone carried their lunches and we'd go outside and have afternoon recess from, I don't know, maybe 12.30 to 3 o'clock, and then they'd go in school for 15, 20 minutes, and then the bus would come and take them home. Mr. Von Inns has a lot of fun stories while teaching at Harlem School. There's a couple things that, stories that come up when I tell people about West Ottawa, and when the first year I taught, it was in Harlem School out on Berry Street, and Berry Street was a dirt road, and during the winter, even though it was a dirt road, we never missed a day of school, but spring vacation came, and the week after spring vacation, it rained so much that they had to shut the school because the buses would just sink down in the mud on the road. There was no way to get the kids to school. Now, when I was at Harlem, across the street from Harlem, there was cornfield across the street, and the geese would land in there when they were traveling south, and we would be in class, and one of the kids would yell, geese, and everyone who brought a shotgun, there were 13 of them, would grab their shotgun. Their shells were in their pockets. They would run across the road and they would try and shoot a goose. You know, if they had to, if they were lucky enough to get a goose, they would have to take it home on the school bus. But that was not an uncommon thing because things were a little different at that time. While teaching at Harlem, they were in the process of building our school, which you now know the land we are on used to be an airport. In 1961, they finished the school, and one side was for the high school students, and the other side was for the junior high. Mr. Von Nunes has a, quite a few funny stories about teaching at this school as well. Now, when we finally got in this building, I showed you about putting people who misbehaved in that closet where the um, cabinets were. It looks like a book rack. But if you lift it, there's a space underneath here, and it goes all the way to the ceiling. And kids 
when they'd mess around in class or couldn't behave, I'd simply put them in there and they'd stand up for an hour. There was no room to move around, just to stand straight. And after an hour, if they didn't mess up, they got to come out and go to their next class. If they still screwed up, they wound up in the principal's office. Soon, all those hidden spaces will be gone after the remodel is finished. As more people started moving to the north side, the district continued to grow. However, lights, the current high school was filling up, so they built the middle school, which is now Mac Bay. Mac Bay had a rotating schedule, and here's something called mini courses. Here's how that worked. When we moved to the middle school, we had something called a rotating schedule, which you probably don't understand what it is. But on Monday, you would meet six classes, and then on Tuesday, you wouldn't meet the last class of the day. In other words, sixth hour, you'd go first hour through fifth hour, and then we would have intramurals. That means everybody in the school, homerooms had their teams, and we had teams in everything, girls football and boys basketball and wrestling and floor hockey and all kinds of things. And we also had something called mini courses where you spent three weeks. My mini courses, one, I would taught pole vaulting, because I was a track coach and also we, I refereed floor hockey and just you did whatever you wanted to. There was glass blowing and there was photography and fishing and anything somebody wanted to do. If you could find 15 kids who wanted to do it as well, you would spend the last hour of the day in a mini course or in intramurals. If you talk to students that went to West Ottawa back then, such as Mr. Hardy, they have great memories of mini courses and challenging other homerooms in intramural sports. In those days, school went from, I think, 8.30 in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon because we didn't have middle school sports in those days. And, and obviously, there were no girls' sports. Girls' sports didn't come until, I think, the 1980s and now there are just as many girls sports as there are boys. In fact, the only sport for girls back then was cheerleading. Mr. Ron Inns was not only a teacher for 43 years, but coached boys and girls basketball and high school track. He has many great stories about his athletes. Back in the day, the coach would have to drive on the bus to the sporting events. One time, when he was driving back from a track meet with the team, he realized that the brakes weren't working and the bus hit a car and rolled one and a half times. After an investigation, they found out the brake lines were, which are located under the exhaust had burned. Good thing everyone was all right. Well, I taught at West Ottawa for 43 years. I retired in 2003, and then I've been announcing football and basketball games for the high school and some middle school stuff as well. If you've been to a home football game, you will recognize what has become known as the voice of West Ottawa. We have a touchdown, West Ottawa. Here's a brand new. Mr. Von Inns considers himself a Panther since he has started school in what is now the West Ottawa District starting in 1942. Here's how the school decided to have the Panther mascot. Well, when this district first began, because of the animosity between Holland and West Ottawa because they tried to take over this property, the people who went to school here wanted nothing to do that had Dutch connotations in the name, and that's why they chose the Panther rather than choosing the wooden shoes or choosing the flying windmills or whoever it happened to be. And so we became the West Ottawa Panthers. We talk about the Panther pride and here's what Mr. Von Inns is most proud of when it comes to being a Panther. We've had some pretty exceptional people and particularly when this place was new and this was the school of the area, everybody was very, very proud of the fact that we had a high school and we were a country school and we had become very successful. Now this was the place to be and for many, many years um, we had, as I said, very successful people. In the 1990s, West Ottawa was featured in USA Today, which is the national newspaper, and there were huge pages and pages of, of West Ottawa because we were on what was called the cutting edge of education. The focus of providing students with a high quality education as well as athletics and extracurricular clubs is what has made West Ottawa your school district stand out. You are a part of something exceptional and have opportunities for your future. Here is Mr. Ronin's hopes for future Panthers. Well, my hope for the future Panthers is what happens, what has happened in the past years. My children are both graduates of West Ottawa. My granddaughters are graduates of West Ottawa. And West Ottawa has always been a place that 
when people talk about the area, they talk about West Ottawa and how proud they are of the fact that their kids go to school here and the great educations that they get. And so I just hope that that continues and everyone gets, as the sign says, college and career ready. So whether you decide to go to college or whether you decide to get a job instead of going to college, you can be successful. Thank you Ms. so much, Mr. Von Inns, for sharing with us some West Ottawa history. You are truly a part of the legacy of West Ottawa.